Hey everyone, thank you for coming to the page. My name is Brant Phillips with Invest Home Pro, and you may also know me with the Houston Capital Group. And what you're about to watch is a video replay of an event that Jason Bible and I from Houston House Buyers put on recently, um, more or less to help educate people about the opportunities that exist with private mortgage lending, but also to ask a lot of questions from experienced private mortgage lenders from people who are already um, in this business and know how to you know self-direct their IRAs or just invest their their cash or other capital um, with real estate investors like myself and Jason and other uh, similar investors and companies that are out there so what this turned into though was just a really great event of Q&A question and answer um, just a lot time for Jason and myself to uh, you know, give insights onto how we run our business, how other investors may um, work with private lenders. We also had one of our attorneys in attendance who provided some great insight. But anyways, I'll uh, keep it short and let you get onto the video. And I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get a lot of takeaways about how you can possibly, uh, you know, become an investor with uh, opportunity that exists with private mortgage lending. And if you like some additional information about our company and what we do um, there should be some contact information on this page and um, we'd love to talk with you about this uh, investment opportunity in the very near future take care and enjoy my name is Jason Bible and that's uh, Brant Phillips he's going to talk a little bit later uh, we're real estate investors here in Houston one thing they told us this is not a quest event we just borrow their offices so uh, but we're not going to pitch anything I'm sorry I hope Hope nobody brought their checkbooks. Um, do I, yeah. So, uh, let me explain a little bit how we developed this private lender summit and kind of the point behind it and all that stuff. This was about a year, year and a half ago. Brett and I, we get together every now and then, run into each other at other events, and we were talking about private lenders. And we found this trend where uh, a new private lender would enter the market. They have a, a Quest account, much like you know probably a lot of y'all in this room. And uh, they'd start networking at real estate events. And then they'd run into somebody like Brant and I, and they'd say, hey, we're private lenders. We'd say, great, well, let's go to lunch and talk about maybe we're a good fit. And inevitably, we'd have the conversation of, well, what kind of interest do you pay? What kind of rates? That sort of thing. And a lot of times, we'd almost get into this, I don't want to say a competitive bidding situation, but where the lender would say, well, I met this new investor, and they're willing to pay me you know, four points and 15%, whatever the number. And we'd say, hey, that, I mean, that's, that's more than hard money lenders. <laughs> and so they'd go, yeah, I'm going to make a lot of money. And I'd say, well, if, if they're going with a hard money, if they're going with you instead of a hard money lender and hard money is cheaper, I mean, why, why would they do something like that? So inevitably, this lender would then do a deal with this new real estate investor. And so we'd see the, uh, the private money lender at a, an event a month or two after they, they started doing the deal. And we'd ask them, hey, how's it going? Oh, it's going great. They just started the rehab. It's going to be fantastic. You're going to make a bunch of money. I'm going to make a bunch of money. I said, oh, okay, great. And then about two or three months later, we'd see him again. Hey, how's it going? Well, you know, we're having some problems. The rehab didn't go as well as we thought it would. And the ARV wasn't as high as we thought it was. In other words, the property wasn't worth as, as much as they thought it would. It's kind of still in the market. And but, uh, but it looks like we're going to be okay. And then two or three months later after that, I'd say, I run into them at another event. Say, hey, what's what's going on? What you know? What's going on with the property? And they'd say, Well, I had to foreclose on, it and I had to take the property back. And not only did I have to take the property back, but I ended up losing twenty thousand dollars of my principal. And so Brent and I were like, Okay, this is this is good. So uh, we're starting to see some of these folks that get into our industry that probably shouldn't belong in our industry. And I thought, Well, there's two ways to solve this problem. One is we can run these folks up the flagpole on social media and make sure nobody does business with them. I'm like, well, that's, and then Brent goes, that's probably not a good idea. I said, yeah, that's, that's probably not a good one. He said, or we can teach private lenders how to lend, how to do a private money deal. And we're not the experts in this stuff. We've just done it a bunch of times. So we have a pretty good idea of how this is supposed to work. Uh, and so really the point of today is to do two things, and that is to teach you fundamentally how to 
uh, how to look at borrowers and assets, how to evaluate a borrower and an asset. You may have the best asset in the world, but if the borrower you're dealing with is um, uh, an unethical person, you'll find out pretty quick. So don't think that just because you have the property means that you can do some of these deals. One of the things that, unfortunately, you know, when Tom and I started Houston House Buyers, started about three years ago and we've done over 200 properties to date. And one of the things that's happened in the last two years is we've become what we call the private lender bailout team. Inevitably, someone's heard us, someone's heard us at an event and they call, and I know Brant's had this happen a million times too, they call us and they go, oh my gosh, I don't know what this borrower is doing. Like, I don't even know if they've been to the property. They're not answering my calls, text messages. I mean, they've just gone completely dark. The house is a mess. No one's rehabbing it. What do we do? And of course, we drive out there and we look at the house. And, yeah, yeah, right. This is a total mess. And so we've had to bail another a number of those lenders out, and in part because they didn't know how to lend. But the second piece is they've gotten into business with some people who really shouldn't be in the business. So that's where the Private Lender Summit came from. We looked around the educational landscape, realized there's nobody out there teaching lenders how to lend. So in any case, that's where we came up with this event. So I'm going to go ahead and invite Brant up here. and He's going to go through a couple of slides, and then I'm going to finish with a slide about interest rates and the market and that sort of thing. And then uh, we'll just open it up to networking and, and Q&A. So Brant, it's all yours. Thanks, buddy. Jason was a little bit modest. They actually bought a million homes a month. <laughs> so, how many people in the room have ever loaned before on a deal? A little more than half. That's good. Very, very good. How many of you in the room have ever loaned on a deal that went bad? Only one. That's that's two. So two. That's really good. Yeah. I think you do a lot of loans, so that's that's just a numbers thing. Well, so a little bit about my story and why I'm even up here right now and kind of how this whole private money thing came about for me was when I first began buying houses, which was 10 years ago when that little dude was about two years old. <laughs> my son's here tonight. I think first time he's ever been to any of my speaking event. He's about two years old, and I had this bright idea to go out and start buying houses and become a real estate investor. And my wife and I were living in an apartment. We had no money, just finished paying off student loans and credit cards and all this kind of stuff. And my wife's like, uh, hey, how are you going to do that? We don't have any money. And I was like, I haven't figured that out yet, <laughs> but I'm really committed, so I'm going to see what I can do. So when I started was the day in the uh, day and age of peace, love, and free mortgages, right? Like anyone could get a mortgage, just sign and get a mortgage. So I started out that way, and it was fairly easy. It was almost too easy. I knew nothing really when I got started, and I'm not, I'm not kidding. Other than a few books and a couple of networking groups, I knew very little about real estate. And I remember after my first deal, I put money down to borrow on a credit card. After that second and third deal, I was doing no money down. And I told my wife, I'm like, I'm new to this whole thing, but this, this don't feel right, right? And so lo and behold, 2008 happened, and 9, 10, 11, 12 happened. So after my first year, I couldn't get bank loans anymore. And so I had a problem. I wanted to keep buying houses, but the banks didn't want to loan to me anymore. Okay, I hadn't done any bad deals. I had bought 10 homes with bank financing, and that was their cap at the time. And uh, they had pretty much gone belly up at that time. And so they're like, no. And the problem that specifically that I had was I had three properties in hard money loans that I didn't have an exit strategy to get out of those loans, right? So I had a little bit of a problem, which turned out to be a really good problem in hindsight. So I had to figure out, how can I get out of these loans? So at that point in time, I didn't even know what private money was or private mortgage lending was. I didn't know what it, didn't even know that it existed. So at that, that point in time, I, I began partnering. I knew about the concept of partnering and I began uh, calling 
friends, family members, uh, business associates, anyone that I could, and I began putting together partnerships. And I put together, I think, four partnerships in 2008. Um, had all those partnerships are still intact to this year, with the exception of one, we sold all our properties last year, and the others, we've sold those properties as of this year. Um, so that was great. It was good. I developed really good relationships. The following year, though, after a year of doing partnerships, you know, I said to myself, I don't know if partnering is the best option for me in terms of giving up. I was doing 50-50 splits, and I'm the one finding the deal, managing the rehab. I was leasing out the properties. I was managing the properties. I'm doing all this stuff for 50% of the deal, and I was happy at that time. It got to a point where not so happy and like maybe there's something else and that's when I learned about private money. So I started researching that and looking into it and and it became a great alternative for me and, and my investors. So in 2009, in 2009 I was able to uh, uh, meet my first private lender and do my first deal using a private lender and so since that time I don't know how many, I know we're in the hundreds, like over a hundred deals that we've done with private lenders. And very happy to say, and I'll, I'll brag and boast a little bit, you know, I've, I've never done a bad deal. And what I'm calling a bad deal, meaning I've never uh, been foreclosed on, I've never not performed according to my note with my lenders. And even though I've lost money on deals before, Yes, I have. And if you talk to real estate investors who haven't lost money on deals, you know, maybe one of two things are going on. They haven't done very many deals or maybe they're lying. <laughs> so that's something that you guys as the lender are going to have, you're going to have to do to screen and vet the, the borrowers that you're working with. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, also learned that Whenever lenders learn about this opportunity, and when it's done properly, they really enjoy this investment. Um, I've never had a lender that has not loaned to our company multiple times, with the exception of one. And he was fired by us, he was just not a fun person to work with. Um, but everybody else, like, they, I've had lending relationships for seven, eight, nine years, but like, Jason also said, and shared some stories with, I've also heard the horror stories. Some of, some of my lenders have loaned to other borrowers, and I get those phone calls, right? Brent, I need your help. I haven't heard, I, I got a call just last week. I haven't heard from the investor. It's been six months. I went by the house. It doesn't look like they've barely done anything. The grass is high. Uh, I called about the insurance. The insurance is uh, is is expired. Like there's, I don't have proof of insurance right now, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what we're going to talk about tonight is just education on how to how to prevent things like that happening. Okay. And so, although I don't like to talk about it, 